Hey, yo, 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 man, it's Case and S, man, up out of Pomona, California. I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV. Man, I hope that y'all tap in, come tune in, man. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. On the line. From Pramona, California, ladies and gentlemen, I have Kay Finesse. What up, man? Yo, yo. Yo, how you doing? I'm doing good. Playboy, how are you, man? man I can't complain, man. Just another day, man. I'm blessed to be alive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's that's definitely the main thing, man. Well, shit, let's, uh, let, let's take it all the way back, man. Tell everybody uh, where you grew up. Oh, all well, right. First and foremost, my name is Kay Finesse. Born and raised. Uh, if y'all don't know, it's a it's a city uh, outside of the outside of LA, uh, going east, going towards uh, the Inland Empire. Now, is it is it considered LA or is it considered uh, the Inland Empire? No, it's not. Uh, it's considered Los Angeles County. Actually, it's yep. uh, it's the last uh, city in Los Angeles County to be exact. And whereabouts in Pomona did you grow up? I grew up on the I grew up on the north side, uh, which is basically where like Pomona High at, and uh, like I uh, grew up right around the corner of Pablo Moore's, uh, uh Park. Okay, cool, cool. And shit, I guess before we talk about your neighborhood and everything, when who are some of the the first uh, Crips and Bloods to to make step foot in Pomona? Mm-hmm. Um, the set wise. Sit down, sit down. Trey five seven. That's gotcha. the, uh, yeah, that's one of the uh, that's like the original gang out there. Yeah, and then after that, you will have like uh, like Ghost Town Crip will come around. You feel me? And then like, then you got like the Hispanic gangs who started like come on the Twelfth Street. It was a gang before that too. I can't remember. It's like an old Mexican like mafia type gang that that was actually around before Twelfth Street. A lot of people don't know. I didn't start coming around until like ninety nine. That's when I got uh onto the scene, you know, as far as, like, uh, into the gang-banging scene, you know, where I really was, like, getting put on the gang and stuff. I was a young man, too, at that. Mm-hmm. Well, shit, let's take it back uh, a little bit before before 99. Uh, I guess, when did you, quote-unquote, jump off the porch and just start, you know, doing your thing in the streets? Uh, Really around that time, around uh, 1999. You know, I was a... Uh, I was a young, I was a young man when I got put on. You know, at the, right now I'm only the age. I'm only uh, 30 years old. I'll be 31 in January. Mm. Okay, so, so you're like damn, they're 10, like nine. 10, I was nine, nine years old. I was nine. Yeah, I was nine in '99. I was already jumped off the porch. Bump. Stuff that people are doing now, like a lot, a lot of things that people do now, it was different back then when I got put on because the gang banging activity was a little bit different. The atmosphere was different. People were different than how things are now. Now it's a little bit uh, more so like a fashion, mm-hmm. I would say. I would say game bank is like a fashion. Like it's just something to, to do. You know, people change up now, like how they change their outfits. Oh, man, we're definitely going to get into that, dog, especially when it comes to this hip hop shit. Um, but let, let's go back to when you were nine. Take me back to that day. Did you get jumped in? Like, what was the whole process? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. No, I didn't get walked on. I didn't get no, oh, you nine years old, you get a walk on. No, you got, yeah, I got beat up. Okay. I got, for sure, I got beat up. I got jumped on. When were you, I guess, you know what I'm saying, most active? Uh, I was most active basically from that time on. From that time on, once, once that happened, and it was a, I was full fledged in. I was all the way in. Um, I already had grew up kind of like uh, chaotic, you know what I'm saying. So it was already like I already had like a problem with authority and stuff like that. Just in school at a young age, already had like a like a lot of problems as as a child just in school, you know. Um, so being nine years old and getting put on the gang was just fuel to the fire. She wanna see the city bus. She don't wanna ride the city bus. 
because she's new to the town I advise, look for truth that is a lost in the sound Brains are lost in the cloud, dead from all of the smoke That's the reason why the ostrich hides his head in the ground That's the reason why the monster even puts on a mask And we turn the city green to blend in with the grass The city scene made a crash, I fell in love with it twice Had to tell her goodbye cause she fell in love with the night I couldn't keep up, I tried to bring her down from the sky But the clouds were so nice that she took a nap for a while And when she woke up I finally had a kid and a lady Bone told me he saw it the other day with the baby Ain't life crazy, I think about it once in a while When it's cloudy outside and the sun goes None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Spinning out a cylinder, moving, I'm in reverse Committing crimes of passion, judging jury at first But I love that girl, been my woman since day one Had a couple of kids in the house, the job done So what happened while we ain't loving no more? Maybe I should take some blame instead of taking the score But me and more don't go, I'm begging you gotta change We can work it out even through pleasure and pain You gotta chill with the liquor girl, you get too friendly Who you talking to baby, that's my man Henry That's what I'm talking about baby, just sit your ass Damn. You wanted to have some fun, me take you out on the town So you can shake a tail feather, maybe we cut a rug Drinking and driving on the low key, rum in a jug Give me a hug, wrong nigga baby You drive your nigga crazy in the morning Won't remember shit, I know it's kinda hazy None of these drugs do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point of hurting people that you're close to Yeah Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Ready, ready, set, go. go Put your seatbelt on, up in the way we bout to go The road is gon' get windy, promise not to lose control The final destination's bound to captivate your soul And so, many MCs inspired to be One of the baddest motherfuckers to touch the MIC Then the law came life, now the dreams deferred All the years of writing rhymes captured in a blur My ponders, contemplating the worst Put all your energy into the music, now you're looking for thirst to be quenched Paying dues upon dues Keep on telling yourself I'm making others believe in you too And it's true You can make it if you try There's levels to everything Better believe it Cause you can deny it And never achieve it It won't come easy Just put in the work And know your worth Continue to rise Cause all we do is capitalize None of these drugs Do what they supposed to Yeah And what's the point Of hurting people That you're close to Yeah Most of my life I've been following stars Knowing I ain't really had to go that far Come to find out it's the truth I already know Yeah Yo, 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 man, it's Case and S, man, up out of Pomona, California. I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV. Man, I hope that y'all tap in, come tune in, man. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of When were you, I guess, you know what I'm saying, most active? Uh, I was most active basically from that time on. From that time on, once once that happened, and it was a, I was full fledged in. I was all the way in. Um, I already had grew up kind of like uh, chaotic, you know what I'm saying. So it was already like I already had like a problem with authority and stuff like that. Just in school at a young age, already had like a like a lot of problems as as a child just in school, you know. Um, so being nine years old and getting put on the gang was just fuel to the fire. Did you go? Did you, know you, I mean? did you go through the system, juvie, CYA? Yeah, I, I caught my first. I caught my first juvenile hall case actually in 2002. I was 12. Uh, I had caught it a, a abortion, little attempted murder case. I ended up beating that case though um, on one of my auntie uh, boyfriends. I ended up beating that case though. I ended up uh, getting that exonerated. But my actual time, my like really do time for a case that I got caught for and stuff like that was a. Uh, I was 14. Mm. 
But I did sit down that first time I sat down for like six months in uh, Los Petrinos Juvenile Hall, which okay. was right there in Downing. Yeah, yeah, very familiar, right off Imperial and Old River School Road. Exactly, yeah. So 2002, I was there for like six months, got out, and then uh, went back in 2004, two years later, while I was 14, I caught a, I caught a gun case. Uh, mm. Nothing, I had to go sit up in there and shit, too, for a minute. So they switched, uh, shit, shit me off to, uh, to camp. Okay. Well, should talk to us what it's like, you know, as an active gang member entering juvenile hall. What's the first day like? Who do you link up with? What's what's the whole situation? Oh man, man, man! You got to go up in that bitch, man. You got to go up in there and just like you got to really be like a really full fledged about that life because juvenile hall systems in Los Angeles County is not nothing. It's nothing nice. It's not nothing like any other juvenile hall. And I've been to some juvenile hall systems in like San Bernardino County and like uh. Like up in like uh, the Bay Area, up toward that. Well, I forgot the county that is. Uh, uh, I want. I want to say it's. Uh, I forget the exact county it was, but I've been to some juvenile halls out that way too in the Bay. So, is it on on site with your enemies, or are you linking up? Yeah, it's on the cracking on site. So basically, like uh, as soon as you get in, you basically man, you gotta just like if you you gotta go in there about that life because. If not, you're going to get marked out. And then all you get marked out there, you get marked back out when you get to the streets because the streets going to hear about it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you got you to gotta just go in there and you got to be an animal. Was it, um, was it harder for you at the beginning or harder for you towards, the, you know, later on in life doing time? Is that first? You know, Judy I Hall think the hard? initial... Mm-hmm. I think the initial, I think juvenile hall just kind of like raised you to prepare you for everything else. After that, it was like nothing else really gave you no fear. See, the initial fear is juvenile hall as a child. That's the first initial fear. You feel me? So that's the initial fear. Then once you go in there and then it's like, like you see like, damn, oh, hold on, man. Like this shit regular, like you grew up fighting already. Like if you grew up how I grew up, you grew up fighting. So fighting is regular. Fighting is easy. Like you either going to win or you going to lose or it's going to be a draw. So if you're going to join the hall with that with that spirit of a lion, the heart of a lion, and you just you just going there blazing, all you see your enemy get off on a blazing. You feel me? It's 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 simple. It's easy. It's not. It's, it, you, you shouldn't have no fear, but you're gonna have that initial fear because you you're young and you're going into a place that's foreign to you. But once you get into it, once you get in there, you see it's regular. Like it's like regular activity. It's nothing. So like when you get back to the streets, it's like. It, you, it don't really make you feel like for me, it didn't make me feel bad. It didn't make me feel like I didn't want to go back. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which was crazy. Oh, a colony is coming. But it's from Venus. And if you're still alive, I think you'll see how we differ. And I agree with you about what they call music. Why don't you play some? I'm at a crossroads every damn day, looking back in my past when I sleep. But living on the edge, now I do it enough. Iniquity down to my feet. What do I do when I need a little food and I gotta get the money for the rent? Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord, come my son, he can give me some money, repent. What? What? Thank you. I really love you, baby, so I spank you. Life is a way straight, fucking you up. Living in a prison, I'ma shank you. So what's love got to do with it? When it with my heart on my sleeve, I'm a foe. But she says she love me, she want to hug me, under my she stories get told. I spy with my little mind's eye, dreams that'll be on what you can see in daylight, baby. gonna be okay and while the world burns i'll be near the skyline and i'll be biding my time till i can ride the wave then everything gonna be okay yeah what are the chances you're picking a flight we're leaving tonight pack up your bags we're leaving this place and this baggage because what could we do while Rome is collapsing But not in a day We'll be okay Let's hit the Amalfia Jackson I'll Pull up the map then Cause I'm through Keeping up with these Joneses Don't care what they're posting You know You only see what they show you Let's fall off the grid then Cause we don't Owe nothing to no one Darling just listen It'll be Just like starting over and I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight Baby ignore the rain 
everything gonna be okay And while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay Wanna be on a beach somewhere Get kicked up in my chair Smoke all up in the air Clouds are looking lovely My girl is by my side My gun is by my side But why do cameras always make me look so ugly? And the smile fades when they disappear Till it's only you wishing someone cared Killing out the window Is anybody there? Does anybody care? Was the rope in the fucking chair? And since God wanna play these fucking games I'ma take it there With my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay And while the world burns I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay let me slide on in like I hit a home run Bottle of the night, I get the job done Celebrating life, I buy bottles like I wanna Pour some out for the homies, I'm on ya Reminisce, swing in memory Every time I blaze a tree, voices in my head Keep on urging me, tell them about the story Hate the game from the hood All about the paper, many years misunderstood Thinking I could one day make it on the big stage Amazed at what I say, metaphorical wordplay Fucking up your frequency Got you moving and grooving to a kind of time of state Nah, I'm gonna stay high, chilling, embracing the vibe Taking you on a ride, a mission never denied As long as you recognize the eyes in the sky I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay And while the world burns I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay Hey, yo, 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 man, it's K Finesse, man, up out of Pomona, California. I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV. And I hope that y'all tap in, come tune in, man. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. What was the longest stretch you ever did? As far as uh, in my adolescence, just, or, uh, any any just yeah any time, man. Now, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say it, so I was I was gonna let you say that. You know, what I'm saying yeah. Now, man, I'm gonna say now, man. You know, uh, would you share with now, us how long man. you're doing? Uh, well, I, I was doing a life sentence. Uh, they had got me for a murder. They got me for a murder robbery. Um, in which in which I was. An innocent bystander, but you know, um, they um, they wanted people to tell and stuff like that, you know. But we don't do that in the line of field and where I come from and how I grew up in, you know. Uh, I just I just live up under that law where you just don't ever tell. Telling is something you don't do. You feel me? Uh, so, but fortunately, you know, for me now, uh, I've been down twelve years, but I have um I have a a, a beautiful light at the end of the tunnel now. So it's beautiful. Uh, just acquired a lawyer and all that. Um, before the lawyer had already had a light at the tunnel, I was already going to be co- coming home just due to, you know, new existing laws that have changed, um, which is, you know, working in my favor, which is beautiful. Um, but just the lawyer on his own is beautiful because that's literally going to give me an opportunity to really go home sooner than what I thought I was going to go home. Yeah. I, I, I can't wait to, till I get that text or that call that you made it out, man. So that's that's good news. Um, just stay positive man. and just, yeah, just keep your nose clean and don't fuck with shit. Just do your thing and ride this shit out, man. You're, you've been down 12 already? Yeah, 12 already, man. And uh, it's a bittersweet. It's bittersweet, man. You know, I just, I, uh, I call it a bittersweet moment because it really saved me and helped me to really reinvent myself. You know, I had to kill off the old me to in order to be reborn to the person I am now. You feel me? Like, when y'all listen to my music and you hear what I'm talking about on my music, you feel me? I'm going to talk about a lot of dark, deep things that was in the past and stuff like that and talk about how I'm able to talk, you know, be free with it and, you know, I'm, I'm able to be 
this new invented person that I have, you know, created myself into be. Well, not even to create myself, but just be be the person I was actually truly meant to be. So instead of somebody that I wasn't. So through my music, I'm able to be that person. Through my music, I'm able to express myself and express all those feelings and emotions and shit. And it's a beautiful thing. So through the music, y'all will be able to hear, like, you know, my story, my life story. Man, as a hip-hop nerd, I love hearing shit like that. Now, so I, I, I can't assume. So you're recording from behind bars, right? Exactly. Okay. Can you explain? Because that's always fascinated me. Ever, I, I'm, I'm 42, 43, going on 43. So, you know, cats from the Bay Area and, and Sacramento and things were doing that, you know, back in 1992. And yeah. that always, you know, just fascinated me, man. Um, especially, like I said, because I'm a nerd when it comes to this hip hop shit. But talk to yeah. me, what like, what's the process like? You know what I'm saying? Putting a song in, out. Okay, for me, it's it's a real business, you know, because for me, like, I, I look at, I'm like a businessman, so I don't just look at the music aspect of it, I look at the business and everything that go into it. Like, it, it really drives me, it motivates me to do that shit, like, it really, like, it excites me, like, it's, that's how I, I get happy to talk about it. So, like, for me, going through the process is just writing, so when I, when I get into the mode of writing, I'm, I'm just focused. It don't take me long to really write a full song. I can write a whole song in, like, an hour you feel me? Give me an hour I can write I'm just focus. An hour I can write two verses, a hook, and be ready. Give me if I'm all the way in the zone, give me two hours, an hour and a half. I have the song in recorded, uh written and recorded. Ready. You feel me? Um Damn. so I record everything on my phone. So That's you have to have obviously you gotta have a phone. Yeah. Gotta have a phone. Uh so okay, so you, you you don't use any outside like you don't have a homie send you like a beat and you freestyle over the phone. That's how they used to do it back in the nineties. You do everything. Well, see, so go ahead. I I do everything digitally through the phone. So thankfully through technology, you could do a whole lot. Okay, so yeah. I use Audio Evolution, which is an app that you could download. So go on your Google Play Store, download Audio Evolution, and buy it. You want to buy it because the free one you don't really get to do nothing with the free one. It just lets you like it's just a demo. You gotta buy it. It's like seven dollars to pay for that. Boom! But you get it forever. You can have it forever. So if you ever lose your phone and your account, whatever, all you gonna do is sign back into your Google account, download the app again to your new phone, and you always got the app no matter what because mm. you already paid for it. So you use that. You record on that. And what I do is I download my stems, which is like the the, the vocals. You know the vocal stems. I download all of them each individually, save them to my drive and then I send it to my engineer. So I work with engineers, you know, like I got a new engineer yeah. I just work with. Um, matter of fact, I got a new song I just released on Christmas called Feeling Free. Y'all should check that out. Y'all should really check that out. It's dope. It's on all digital platforms, any digital platform, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, Amazon, wherever you want to find it. And it's under K-Finesse. Awesome. Is it under K-Finesse? Yeah, K-Finesse. Yeah, K-Finesse. That's my artist name. Yeah. As the time goes by and the earth rotates, we gon' fly high up to outer space. And we will never fall down. I'm one with the universe, call me the sound. The bass booming in your speaker with the microphone, I possess it's a heater. You better drop it, let go. You can't touch my beats or my flow. Nigga, Kevin Smith, my name, but not the director, we ain't the same, man. I'm a pimp by nature, inside of me is a god, the creator. Pursuing my dreams, cause anything is possible, you know what I mean. I wanna live comfortable, but gotta be clean. But working every day from nine to five in my thing. I feel like a trap. Can't get out of the bubble. I'm running out of time. Overload, I'm in trouble. I feel like I'm trapped. Can't get out of the bubble. I'm running out of time. Overload, I'm in trouble. Trouble, trouble. One by one we start to subtract them Separate facade from who really bought that action Feel like I'm trapped In the room without a key Four walls surrounding me Stripping my identity Got me in the bubble to observe and deceive Take away my culture and my nationality Talking about double jeopardy and yeah. Double standard to killing my folks Like it don't even matter And when we gather Disgusted by the charades Bullets spray the crowd Target practice in the game No accountability So who bears the blame They want to see us violent And justify the change Back to how it used to be 
beat Obey or you get beat It's a different time You fuck with mine You feel this heat Not a threat It's a promise Real shit Got the music as a platform For awareness I feel like a trap Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Can't get out of the bubble I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble let me out of this box I'm a claustrophobic robot Who knows not what he does Cause they program my thoughts And they tell me support this And hate that person If I don't then I'm crucified And made to be worthless Does a penny with two holes in it Have a purpose When he smiles They don't really know What's under the surface I'm a product of pain Racism and cocaine I never tooted once But it's all in my veins That shit is all in my genes See, it's my destiny This is nothing new kid I'm just an old recipe A boring story That you've heard hundreds of times Blah 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 Wham 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 Hate my life And my parents both suck I'll never be like them Then you grow up, get married, and end up just like them For the most part, it's our fault we're trapped in this bitch Shit, they gave us the blueprint, I done that I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble I feel like I'm trapped Can't get out of the bubble I'm running out of time Overload, I'm in trouble Trouble, trouble, trouble Yo, 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 man, it's K Finesse, man, up out of Pomona, California. I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV. And I hope that y'all tap in, come tune in, man. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. A steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Now, if I could drop a little 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 gem on you, some game from a dude who's you know a little bit older than you, I would suggest, homie, just just hearing your story and just hearing what you told me in the past five minutes alone, just with this music shit. If you're not doing something on YouTube, you sh you need to jump on it ASAP. Um, and I'm saying that because I'm, I, while you were just telling me, I I pictured you releasing a YouTube video titled "How to Record Music from from Jail or from Prison." You know that yeah. shit would get 500,000 views of people who are in your same position right now who want to, you know what I'm saying, no. And all you have to you don't even have to put your face on it. You could just you could just tell them, you know, what to download, what how you do it. I mean, that could be a I'm just throwing that out there, man. If you want to do uh, that and maybe monetize and maybe connect it with your your whoever's family member you have on the outside, you can connect it to their bank account so you can start seeing some money from this, but you know, the prison thing is really big when it comes to YouTube and, and people hearing stories like I'm sure you have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You could even tell just stories and shit of, of shit you see in, on the inside. You could tell stories of what got you on the inside, like, you know, whatever the case is. But I'm just to drop that little seed on you, dog. And if you want to, okay. you know, pursue it, you know, I'm a text away. You can hit me up and say, hey, how do I do this? I've done I've been doing YouTube yeah. for a minute. So I'm just throwing that out there, man. We're going to continue the interview. But I just wanted to drop that little seed on you because while you were talking, I pictured you saying this on YouTube and actually making some money from it. Hey, that's a good gym right there, too, man. That's a good little gym right there. I'm going to take heed to that. And I was, uh, my will got to spin it when you said that, too. Mm, cool, cool, good. I hope <laughs> I hope I just created something, man. Well, shit, let's, let, yeah, let's move on a little bit, man. I would love to talk a little bit of hip-hop, actually, and specifically some stories, you know, that I'm sure you've heard about while you were behind bars. Um, it's been a weird last couple of years when it comes to hip-hop. Um, first off... Let's talk about one of the biggest rappers in the past two years. Unfortunately, I'm gonna say unfortunately, um, he was a big rapper for a lot of the wrong reasons, for trolling, for some bullshit music. But people liked him, and then he ended up getting caught in crimes, and he starts pointing his arms, and he has more arms than an octopus. Oh, yeah. I'm obviously talking, talking about Takashi Six Nine. <laughs> yeah, Takashi Six Nine, man. As somebody who you know earlier said, you know, you live by a certain code, and your code is why you're you're in the position you are right now. What do you think about somebody like a Takashi Six Nine? Yeah, a dude like Takashi, man, like he's like. The definition of an individual that are uh, called, uh, what I like to call a a, 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 a wannabe, you feel me? He a wannabe gangster. And it's a lot of those I see these days, a lot of wannabe gangsters, like people that's 
that's never really lived that life. You didn't grow up that way. Like you wasn't really born in that. You feel me? Like you really wasn't born that way, but you see it and it looks cool. It looks good. You know, it looks flashy. You know, so you want to touch it. You want to fit it. Next thing you know, you want to wear it. You feel me? But it really don't fit you. That was Takashi. So I understand him. No, but at the same token, coming from the background I come from, I, I can I, I don't I can never respect an individual like him because you got into a game that you know the rules and regulations. And not only do you know the rules and regulations, you put fake all that shit. You said fuck fuck the rules and regulations, fuck the code of conduct and you went against all that. You went against your family and that's so that's supposed to be your familia. That's your family. Once you get in that, that's your family. Don't turn your back on your family. Y'all supposed to have each other back. But he, he was a nobody, you feel me? Like y'all gotta understand, he was a he wasn't a street dude. He got involved with street dudes because he liked the that, that character of, of the street dude. So they used him to their advantage. Which any any motherfucker that comes from the street, they're gonna take advantage of anybody like that because they see that they could they can use him to their advantage for their game for them. You know what I'm saying? But that was stupid too at the same token because y'all put somebody who's not even about that life into that life into that limelight and then y'all expected him to live up under the same code that y'all grew up under because he didn't grow up under that code so y'all expected him to grow up under that to come from under that same code of conduct that y'all grew up under when he didn't grow up under that so when it's time to for that pressure to be applied guess what it's only gonna it's only gonna bust him quickly because he didn't even grow up that way <laughs> yeah and as we see in hindsight, we see what happened. Let yeah, me, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to get told on, and that's why it's best to just not even have those type of dudes in your circle like that. Like, if you know it's a dude like that, it's cool to be friends with him. Like, that's just a friend. Like, he would have been my friend. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't have been my homie. He would have been my friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you say the gang is more, the nine trays are more responsible or do you think he's more responsible or is it a 50 50 thing like they shouldn't i'm gonna say it's a 50 50 thing it's a 50 50 because they shouldn't have allowed him to get put on the game and that as far as in that aspect and do all the things they were doing with him because they should have known he already he was a pussy because he he didn't grow up a gangster he didn't grow up a thug he grew up a pussy he grew up a regular ass boy like a regular you feel me regular Make 
that's when the odds look good I gotta play the hand I see So if I leave right now Would you come with me? And when it's two o'clock, you're not feeling well And all those well drinks have you feeling like hell Your sloppy speech, your makeup starts to spill And faces start spinning, you begin to feel Something, your dirty shirt that you've been wearing for days And that thought that stays, well it begins to play I know you're practicing, becoming healthier But the two dollar drinks don't make it easier And now I'm leaning on the wall, fishing for change in my coat Wishing for a little change, a little glimpse of some hope At night, the stop. Lights match the color of my eyes A butterfly with no wings in the hood flutters by Subtle lies in a poem that got wrapped up in the truth Telling a story from the marijuana smoke in the booth And my eyes are wide shut, but I can see through the rain And I can see it in your eyes that you can see through the pain so And if I, I could leave tonight Would you come with me? If I could leave tonight Would you come with me? And if I have a good hand, I'ma play Cause I'm only living for today I gotta play the hand that I was dealt Cause I can only look out for and myself And I'm always a friend who is flying away I got my feet right on the ground So if I leave right now Would you come with me? And I'm always the friend who is flying away I got my feet right on the ground So if I leave right now would you come with me? I swear I could leave right now If you'd come with me Hey, yo, 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 man, it's Kay Finesse, man I'm out of Pomona, California I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV And I hope that y'all tap in Come tune in, man I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace Speaking of somebody who did do the total opposite, are you familiar with Bobby Schmurter? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Bobby Schmurter, Rowdy Rebel was just released, and Bobby Schmurter should be coming home uh, soon as yeah, well. Yeah, he's next. He on his way out. Yeah, yeah free yeah. all the real niggas, man. And, and what Bobby did, for anybody out there who doesn't know, is... You know, according to, you know, documents, he took more time so him and his homie can get out around the same time so his friends could get less sentence. Less sentences. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How big is he going to be when he gets home, man? Oh, man. He just the what? Y'all thought he was big way before he left, man. He just to blow up, blow up. When Bobby get out, see, because look, when people start to realize if y'all look at the industry, real niggas is winning. Like, the streets want the real. The streets want realism. They want a real nigga. So, like, you gonna have your fake nigga that's gonna still be able to win because you got a lot of people in the world who didn't grow up how a lot of niggas in America grew up. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So they didn't really grow up in that life. So you gonna still have money that they gonna make. You feel Takashi gonna have a big fan base regardless because most of his fan base ain't gangsters. They not they not gangsters. They not killers. They didn't grow up that way. Bobby Smurder though, on another hand, in America, he gonna be a legend. He gonna be on me. He gonna go down a legend because he a real nigga. He went down a real nigga. So at the end of the day, he took his beer like a real nigga. And the streets gonna respect that somebody come home. He gonna be a god where he come from. There it is. Do you know? Uh, are you familiar with the King Von situation? Yes. Okay. Cool. So let me explain to my audience who aren't familiar. King Von, a real popular rapper from Chicago, part of the drill scene. In my opinion, he was next up. He was he had everything, you know what I'm saying? He had the look, he had the flow, he had everything. And he was outside of a, a an Atlanta hookah bar, uh, and he, he ran into one of his enemies, Quando Rondo, another popular rapper. They start fighting, and within a few seconds, um, one of Quando's homeboys lets off, kills King Von in the street. My question for you, uh, as somebody who grew up in, in, in that life, um, the dude's name is Lil Timmy, the one who ended up killing King Von, and right now he is in jail facing, you know, a lot, a lot of time. Um, my question to you though is, did Lil Timmy do what he was supposed to do? Oh man, see, I could be devil's advocate, right? Because I could be on both sides, so you know, it, 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 it for one nowadays, like. Just nowadays, don't nobody really want to fight. I don't know why, but, you know, to me nowadays, a lot of 
these kids now, like these young motherfuckers, like they don't really want to fight. They don't, they don't go a fight. They don't really know how to fight. They're not going to fight or nothing. They quick to get a gun and just shoot because there's so many weapons around now, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, I grew up fighting. I grew up fighting. Like I grew up in the streets where we could fight. We could sit down and we could, man, we could squabble up. We could squabble all day. Like we could fight. What's the deal? You want to squabble? We could squabble. Let's, let's squabble down. You feel me? But, um, but I understand the street aspect of, you know, on some gang banging shit too. So it's like, you know, we fought and we, you know, we did the other things too in the streets. Uh, but, oh boy, he, he, he was in the, if you look at it from a street aspect, he was in the right. The streets, his niggas is going to say he in the right because at the end of the day, King Von is their enemy. So if that's their enemy, you, you, you talk from a street perspective to eliminate your enemy. From any perspective, even in, if you look at it in the military perspective, they, they drill that in their head the same way they drill it to your head in the streets. The same way. So people going to be mad at him, of course. They're going to be mad because that was King Von. And he was, you know, he was a star. He was somebody. And he was already... He was just to blow all. He was already blew up, but he was gonna blow and take off on a whole different wave and a whole different way. You feel me? Uh, so people are gonna be mad, but just on the street perspective, like that's part of the street life. Like everybody not gonna fight, and and King Von should have knew that though. He should have been aware of that from jump. Like this your enemy, ain't no fighting your enemy. Nigga, like you should know this for sure. You he should sh- he should for sure for sure should know. You know, especially where he come from, and then you know the uh. I'm gonna say the accusations that have been placed upon him. You feel me? So he should know. Yeah, a lot of people agree with that. I ask that question often on my show, and yeah, a lot of a lot of people say if, if they were in that situation, they would have they would have done the same thing. And I'm a civilian on the outside looking in, and if I'm in a state where I can legally you know, carry a, a weapon, and someone's jumping my homie, and I turn around and I see 30 guys, you know, that may or may not rush him. You know, yeah. as a civilian, right. I have to do what I have to do as well. Oh, hell yeah, man. The only, it's, it's only right because in the day you're defending yourself and your people. You, you try to protect you and yours. So I'm going up that bitch on me. I'm going up it because it's too, for one, it's a whole lot of y'all. It's only a, it's only a small amount of us. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to air something out to get the crowd to disperse. Yeah. Get me a mind up out of here. You think me a mind? That's the number one thing to make sure me and me a mind is safe and come home. It's life or death, and that's why I tell kids nowadays, like even my nieces and nephews and stuff like that, when I do get to talk to people, like, if you're in the streets, y'all better really be with this life because there ain't no half-stepping in the streets. There's just no half-stepping. You're either going to be with it 100% or you're not. Yeah. Let's move on to someone else. I'm curious since you are from L.A. County as well. And you were actually, you know, locked up during this time. So I'm definitely more interested in, in your thoughts on this whole situation. But I would love to know your thoughts in hindsight and just what, when it happened, what was the atmosphere like, you know, where you are right now when Nipsey Hussle was killed? Oh, man, that shit was tragic, man. It was, uh, it was a tragic in here, uh, a lot of people felt a lot of sorrow for, you know, the situation, you know, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sympathy, you know, he was, a, uh, despite where he was from and on the, some game banging stuff, just him as a man, uh, you know, the thing that he did in his city and where he come from and what he was trying to do was well respected in the streets and not just on the streets, but behind his walls too, you know. Now you did have certain like, you know, some game banging stuff, you know, certain gangs did, you know, say some stupid, you know, certain things and, you know, it did cause, you know, a riot um, or two in a couple spots. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it was pretty, yeah, yeah. Other than that, it's pretty peaceful. Uh, okay. How could something like that have been prevented? You know, someone that close getting to him and, and ending his life like that. If it could have uh, been prevented. It could have been prevented because it, it, it sure, for sure could have been prevented for one. If if whatever they said is if whatever they said like how they try to say that he you know he said something to this dude about him being over there because he was a snitch and this and that if he really did do that Nipsey coming from the street <gasps> excuse me he should know better like just me being a street motherfucker like I come from the street so I'm just gonna think like a street individual would think and if you know somebody already a killer if you know this person already a killer 
It's already been known that this dude's a killer. Boom. All right. We done got this word. So and in the street life, art, yeah, in the street life, you call somebody a snitch, it's pretty much on is what you're saying? Like, that's that's like a dude, don't fucking call me a snitch. Yeah, if you, yeah, exactly. But that's the it. Yeah, yeah, that's in life in general. Ain't yeah. nobody going to want to be called no snipe. No, nah, in street life, like, you ain't going to, just calling somebody a snitch isn't like, like, like people won't take that personal. Right? You feel me? We got paperwork at. How you know I'm what when I'm stitching on a hole, you feel me? So that's gonna be something personal or something real personal. You know what I'm saying? So you telling the person that that's that's known to be a killer that he is snitch, you're gonna do that. And then you turn your back on that individual, mm. you know, it's never supposed to do that. Like, yeah, if you don't turn your back on no on no killer, you're a killer. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So it could have been prevented though if he would have never did that. Or if you gonna do that. The only option for you to do is eliminate the eliminate the threat. If that's the case, mm. yeah, you know? and he should have had better security. You know, he's supposed to be a top dog over there. He got to have a he got to have better. So he got to have real security. He got to really be out to secure it up. Like yeah, you in your set and you feel like a god and all this and that, which is cool. But at the same token, you, you gotta you gotta be prepared for anybody niggas in your own, especially in your hood. Like your hood known for that. Y'all known for killing each other. Hey, yo, 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 man, it's K Finesse, man. I'm about to promote in California. I'm sitting here live, man, with Dusty Vision TV. And I hope that y'all tap in, come tune in, man. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and follow, man. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Something else I would like your perspective on. Um, it sounds like you've been keeping up with, with the current events, but it seems like this year, you know, uh, 20, 2021, that rappers have been easy food out there in the streets. Uh, you know, a lot of rappers recently just have been getting shot, robbed, um, you know, the feds are kicking kicking down their doors, things like that. Um, yeah. one and they robbing people. Yes, Yes, they definitely. robbing people too. They they robbing uh, indie artists on me. I'm not. Oh yeah, that. yeah. Go ahead, talk to me. You know what? Okay, yeah. Let's jump on that because I did hear some about that. So for what? everybody out there, man, you, the game. Yeah, let man, me explain. The game jacked let, me. Let me. Oh, oh <laughs> shit. Talk, hold on one second. Let me explain this because I I'm, I'm just got hip to this a couple of weeks ago. So apparently there's this thing out there where big artists are charging indie artists. Let's say what I don't know, five hundred dollars to to jump on a mixtape. Uh, something like that, and then it, it ends up being a scam. And you said, talk to me about that. Is that is that what you're talking about? Exactly, exactly. So they telling us three hundred dollars, you know, four or five hundred dollars. It just depends. Seven hundred dollars depend on what it is or who it is. And they telling us for you know seven hundred dollars or whatever. They're gonna put, it, put us on the mixtape for one. Why do I gotta pay to get put on a mixtape that you're telling me something about? I didn't come to you about nothing. Mm. So you want me to pay to get put on a mixtape for one? That's already catchy and fishy. But if you're an indie artist and you don't really know the game in the industry like that, you're, you're going to jump on it because you're going to look at it like, oh, this is a top dog. Like, this ain't nothing. This is a good investment on my career. Yeah, that could be right. But it's not because they're, for one, a lot of these people ain't even getting put on the mixtape. So they're just getting jacked. They're not getting put on the mixtape. Mm. You feel me? And then they're talking about they're doing promo. Well, I'm going to do promo for you, too. So it's going to be promo on my page, on this page, on this and that. And I'm going to do this um, consistently throughout the month. They don't do nothing. Nothing. Like, I got put on the game mixtape. I did get a song on the mixtape. You feel me? But all the other stuff, I got a slot on the mixtape. All the other stuff that was supposed to be, that was supposed to come involved, I didn't get nothing. I didn't get not a shout out, not a nothing. He tried to charge me more money after it was said and done. He's like, well, look, no, we could do this, do this, and that. Just promo on this promo, man. I'm going to need uh, 300 more dollars. I'm like, what? Hold on, bro. That was already included in the first shit. And then I found out it was all a scam. And I found out it was multiple artists doing that. And I'm like, damn, like, it's that bad. And I, I knew the game. I should have been already tricky about the game because he already, like, you know, he got a lawsuit. He just lost. Who's that? So I should have already been, like, aware of him. Like, man, this dude got a lot of money that he's probably going to try to get back because he just lost a lot. And he got to give up a lot of his his uh, his uh royalties that he makes from his music <laughs> based on that What uh, artist is this? Put his ass on blast. That's uh that's the game. The game. Oh, yeah, that's man, the game. And one of my favorite MCs too. I'm disappointed, dog. Wow. Yeah, that's the game, man. That's the game. <sighs> Fuck all that. 
Yeah, he out there robbing people, man. They out there. Y'all got to be aware. If you're an indie artist, man, be aware because that's what they is for sure, dude. Yeah, I've heard. Um, I don't want to put anybody's names out there, but allegedly <laughs> I've heard some big names on the East Coast that do the same exact thing. Oh, name. yeah, so a lot of them. I ain't even messing with it. They've been getting at me about that shit, too. I don't even get I don't even get involved in it no more. I don't I don't hit them, I don't do nothing. Like no, nah, don't tag me in nothing, nothing. I'd rather go I'd rather go put my money on a real marketing place, like a real marketing firm to market my my, my music for me. Shit, once again I'm gonna throw that YouTube thing out there. That's your own your nobody markets themselves better than themselves. So if you're you have your own YouTube, you share that shit. You just get on there, do daily content. I'm telling you, homeboy, that's the best. What's crazy market. is I got a YouTube. I got two YouTube channels. I don't even know how to load the content to there though. Like I try to do it on my phone. Dog, it's my like word. It won't let me load the content. My word, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Just give me like a, a 24 hour advance that you want to. You know, you need me for like 20, 30 minutes. I got you, man. We'll talk about it, and I'll, I'll help you at least All get right. started. And we'll we'll go from there. We'll talk more offline, dog. We'll talk more offline. I'm, right. I'm, I'll just drop that other seat again, dog. Just making sure you you, you catch it. <laughs> but uh, one more question I have for you, you know, and then I want to give you a chance to promote, you know, all of your stuff you have going on. But um, okay. like I said, you know, rappers are, are, are easy food right now. And um, I guess one of the first rappers in 2020 that got caught slipping was a rapper by the name of Pop Smoke. You familiar with dude yeah. from New York? Yeah. Um, a big one. He was he was once again supposed to be one of the biggest biggest things going uh new york crip rapper out there um my question for you since a lot of rappers are you know quote unquote easy food right now and i know you've been locked up yeah. for a minute but maybe you have some advice for them out there is how do you think rappers with gang ties should move when they're traveling from city to city state to state performing especially when they have gang ties oh man i think any rapper in general, if you move in state to state, I think you should move. Like, if you, for one, if you just a regular rapper, like, you just an artist, right? I'm going to say just an artist because it's an art. Like, that's all it is, is really just an art. And a lot of these people nowadays, they just rapping this life that they not even living. So if you just rapping that life that you're not even living, you should have security. <laughs> First and foremost, have your security if you go into other people's cities and states. And have, make sure they arm security guards, you hear me? Uh, but if you if you a rapper and you come from that life and you a gangster or some of some type of sort, you feel me? Uh, you should know how to move already. Your entourage should already be your niggas. You know your niggas that you know. You know you know they gon' they put that life. You ain't gotta say no names. You ain't gotta put the niggas in your videos and have the niggas in your. You know move like a general nigga. Because if like Pop Smoke for example, Pop Smoke was already tend to be a legend. Already was a legend. He was only was like 20, 21. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Uh, he put the New York Crip scene on, on the map. You feel me? Big. Like, he put that shit big on the map. Like, he was going somewhere. But you move, you was moving funny because you came out here to uh, the West Coast and you start posting things. And that's what people fail to realize. Yeah, the West Coast is glamour and glitz and all that. But in the inner cities, in these inner cities, it's real life. It's real gang banging over here. It's real gutter. It's real grimy. And niggas is lurking over here. And if you posting your address, you you posting your addy like you 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 a walking lick. You only telling somebody you telling you inviting people over to come get you because y'all think that everything is cool in LA, LA because oh I'm not even in um the inner city in LA I'm I'm in Hollywood man what that mean just because you're in Hollywood you still out here where we at. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just if you moving, if you a gangster, you a gang banger, like, just move smart. Move like a move like a gangster. You guys got to be thinking. You got to think like a gangster. Move like a gangster. Don't move like a, don't move like an average-ass street street um person, just a regular-ass individual. Move like a gangster. You got to move precisely, man. You got to be calculated, especially if you got a bag. And you made me think of something. Even for civilians, I'm going to throw this out there because I may save one or two lives at least. Just leave all your sports caps at home. Don't fucking wear a sports cap in L.A. Anything, you, any sports cap you bring from outside of your 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 city or your state is fucking, is, is has some gang ties to it. So I, I would just say for my civilian friends out there, leave all your shit at home. Yeah, I'm exactly. Just throw that yeah. <laughs> yeah, just leave your shit at home, man, because, man... <laughs> You know, it's cool. It's cool to go out there and splurge and stuff, too. You feel me? Splurge and your shit, but just be smart, man, on how y'all move because a lot of people ain't, 
Like a lot of people, people don't got hungry, a lot dog. of stuff that y'all got, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of yeah. people don't got what y'all got. Yeah. And all y'all do is y'all be flashy for the gram. Mm-hmm. It look good for the internet. It's cool, but it's people that's in real life, they ain't got nothing. Nothing, homie. Especially during this coronavirus shit, people are out of work and they're starting to get desperate. Yeah, most definitely. This shit ugly. That's shit. why I always been a person to feed my people. Even when I was young on the streets, I was always a person to feed mine. Mm. Smart. Shit, actually, I lied. I have one more quick question for you. You can answer it fast if you want, but what um, what what's the whole situation with coronavirus and being locked up? I mean, how did that affect you? Oh, man. It's, it's a hell of people with the COVID in here right now. There's so many people getting sick left and right. Um, I haven't been sick. I'm fortunate. I've been fortunate. I don't really go out myself. They got us, for one, they got us, like, on quarantine lockdown anyway, so we don't get to go out um, to sell at all. You get to shower every three days. That's it. That's what it's been for like the past almost, well, almost a month now. Um, but um, I don't really go out nowhere. I just, you know, um, I stay in my cell. I stay warm. I drink um, a lot of tea. I try to stay at I'm already a health nut already, so I try to just stay as healthy as possible and really don't be around people. Yeah, well, stay safe, homeboy, boy, because you have a light at the end of the tunnel, man, like you said earlier, so... Yeah, just just be safe, dog. Um, shit. Uh, so tell everybody, I guess, where they can find you if you want to promote your music. The floor is yours, man. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, maybe y'all can find me on Instagram at I am K Finesse Three. You can find me on Twitter at Finesse Division. You can find me on uh, on Facebook at Pomona K Finesse and Snapchat at King underscore K five one nine. Uh, you can go check me out on check my music out, man. I'm on all digital platforms. It don't matter whatever you listen to your music on, whether it's YouTube, just type in uh, on YouTube, look up K Finesse Topics. I'm there. Um, you could check me out on Spotify, follow me on Spotify, um, like my music, share it, um, tell me what you think. You can always hit me um, in my inbox on my DM or something and you know, give me some pointers. Um, I'm always willing to. Um, listen to the audience and the fans and things like that and, you know, give feedback and stuff like that. Um, um, also, I have a clothing line coming out. Uh, we'll be coming out next year. we got the Finesse Division clothing line on the way. It's, man, it's, man, it's going up, man. It's only nothing but good things coming coming our way, man. So let's manifest our dreams, man. And uh, I really do appreciate you with this interview. Yeah, My first you. interview. That's um, I can't up. wait to look back on this interview and be like, this is my first interview. Same here. And <laughs> so, I can't wait to, like I said, I can't wait to uh, six months from now when I see you have 50,000 YouTube subscribers. I'm going to be like, I planted that seed, man. So <laughs> most, most definitely, man. I highly appreciate it. 